In this video, we're going to talk about thermistors. What is a thermistor? A thermistor is a thermal resistor. It's a resistor whose resistance is dependent on temperature. Now, there's two types of thermistors you need to be familiar with. The NTC thermistors and the PTC thermistors. The NTC thermistor stands for negative temperature coefficient thermal resistors. Keyword negative. When the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. So that's the basic idea behind an NTC thermistor. When the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. Now, in a PTC thermistor, that is a positive temperature coefficient resistor, as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes up. The NTC thermistor is very useful for creating temperature sensors. If you want to create a device that is sensitive to temperature, that either turns on when it's too hot or turns off when it's too cold, you could use the NTC thermistor for that. Now the PTC thermistor has applications in fuses. Because let's say you have a circuit and if too much current flows in the circuit, the fuse may blow and you may have to replace the fuse. But using a PTC thermistor, it's like a resettable fuse. You don't have to replace it. So let's say if the voltage across this resistor is too high, that means the current is going to be high. When the current flowing through a resistor is very high, it heats up. So the temperature of the resistor goes up and for the PTC thermistor, I mean thermistor rather, when the temperature goes up, the resistance goes up. And when the resistance go up at a certain voltage, the current goes back down. And so the PTC thermistor works as a resettable fuse in that it limits the amount of current flowing through it. Because when the current is too high, it gets hot, the resistance goes up and it brings back down the current. So those are some applications of these two types of uh, special resistors. Now let's talk about the electrical symbols of the thermistor. Here's one way in which you can represent it in a circuit. You draw the symbol of a resistor, put it in a circle, and then put an arrow through it. So that tells you that that's a temperature dependent resistor. Another way in which you can draw it is you can draw it like this. You can draw a rectangle and then a line through the rectangle. Now another one that I've seen, which I like, is this one. It has the symbol of a resistor enclosed in a circle, but it's specified if it's an NTC resistor or a PTC resistor. So those are some ways in which you can represent a thermistor in an electrical circuit. So here is a simple way in which we can employ the use of the NTC thermistor as a temperature sensor. So in a circuit, we have a six volt battery connected across an NTC thermistor and a green LED, which has a voltage drop of approximately two volts. Now let's talk about what's gonna happen. Let's say if we place the temperature sensor in a hot environment, the temperature of the thermistor is gonna go up. And being in an NTC thermistor, when a temperature goes up, the resistor, the resistance rather, goes down. And as the resistance of the circuit decreases at constant voltage, the current flowing in the circuit will increase. And as the current flowing in the LED increases, the brightness of the LED will go up. Now, in a cold environment, the temperature of the NTC resistor is going to go down which means the resistance is going to go up. As we increase the resistance, the current will go down. And as you decrease the current flowing in an LED, the brightness of the LED will go down. So notice that the brightness of the light emitting diode is related to the temperature of the environment. So when it's hot, the LED is going to light up. When it's cold, the LED it's gonna, its brightness is gonna be reduced. It's gonna get dimmer to the point that 
it may shut off, dependent on the voltage and the resistance of the NTC that you use. So that's like a simple way in which you can use this device as a temperature sensor. So you can adjust it in such a way that the brightness will be related to uh, the temperature of the environment. Now let's talk about the math that's associated with the NTC thermistor. So I decided to measure the resistance at different temperatures. At zero degrees Celsius, this is when I had the thermistor in a mixture of ice and water, and I used a thermometer to measure the temperature. The resistance measured across the NTC thermistor was 30 kilo ohms. Now, for other thermistors, it could be calibrated differently, so you just have to test the one that you're dealing with. At 25 degrees Celsius, the resistance was approximately 10 kilo ohms. At 50 degrees Celsius, so this is warm water from a faucet, the resistance was 4 kilo ohms. And then using water that was boiling, but it kind of cooled down a bit, but at 85 degrees Celsius, it was approximately 1 kilo ohm. If you were to graph the temperature and the resistance, let's say if you put resistance on the y-axis, temperature on the x-axis, you'll get a curve that looks like this. You could see the inverse relationship between the resistance and the temperature. Now, the formula that describes the resistance and the temperature of a, an NTC thermistor is this one. R2 is equal to R1 times E, where E is a number, it's approximately 2.718 raised to the beta times 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. So if you know R1, that is the resistance at some temperature T1, you can calculate the new resistance at a different temperature. Now the temperature is not in Celsius, but it's in units of Kelvin. Here, this is in Celsius. You need to convert it to Kelvin if you're going to use that formula. Keep in mind, the Kelvin temperature is the Celsius temperature plus 273.15. So that's how you can convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Now, in order for this to work, you need to calculate the beta constant. And in order to do that, you need to know two resistances at two different temperatures. So beta is equal to the natural log of R1 over R2 divided by 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. And we're going to work on an example problem that shows you how you can use these two formulas when applying to uh, NTC thermistors. A NTC thermistor has a resistance of 10 kilo ohms at 25 degrees Celsius and a resistance of 30 kilo ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. What is the value of the beta constant? That's part A. And then part B will be the resistance of the NTC thermistor at 150 degrees Celsius. So if you want to try this problem, feel free to pause the video and work on it. So first, let's write down what we know. So the first resistance, which we'll call R1, is 10 kilo ohms. And this occurs at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now let's convert 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin by adding 273. We're going to ignore the 0.15 for now. So this is going to be a temperature of 298 Kelvin. R2, the second resistance, is 30 kilo ohms. And the temperature for that is 0 degrees Celsius. And if we add 273 to that, that's the temperature of 273 Kelvin. So with this information, we can calculate the beta constant. And so that's going to be the natural log of R1 over R2 divided by 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. So it's going to be ln. R1 is 10K. R2 is 30K, 
the unit kilo ohms will cancel. So if you put 10,000 over 30,000, it's going to be the same as 10 over 3, which is 1 third. T1 is 298 Kelvin. T2 is 273. And if you're going to type this into a calculator, put that in parentheses. So go ahead and plug this in. LN10 divided by 30 over 1 over 298 minus 1 over 273. That gives me a beta constant of 3,575. So that's the answer I got for part A. Now let's move on to part B. What will be the resistance of the NTC thermistor at 150 degrees Celsius? So the new temperature is now in Kelvin, 150 degrees Celsius plus 273 Kelvin. So that's 423 Kelvin. We need to calculate the new resistance at that new temperature. How can we do that? Well, now we could use the other formula. R is equal to R0 E raised to the beta times 1 over T minus 1 over T naught or T0. So R0, we could say that R0 is going to be 10K. That means T0 will be 298K. So let's replace R0 with 10K, or just 10, and then times E. Keep in mind, E is about 2.718. And then raised to the beta. So this is on the exponent of E. And then this is still on the exponent of E. So 3575 times 1 over T. T is 423. And then minus 1 over T0. T0, we're basically using that as T1. Because R1, we use that as 10K. So T0 in this example will be 298K. So if you plug that in, 10 times E raised to the 3575 times, in parentheses, 1 over 423 minus 1 over 298. All of that is in the exponent of E. You should get R is equal to 0.289 kilo ohms. Now keep in mind one kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. So to convert 0.289 kilo ohms into ohms, multiply that by a thousand. So this is approximately 289 ohms. So that will be the resistance of the thermistor at 150 degrees Celsius. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the resistance of an NTC thermistor at different temperatures. But first, you need to determine the beta constant by knowing the value of two different resistances at two different temperatures. Once you have the beta constant, then you could use that to calculate the new resistance at different temperatures in Kelvin. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.